In the history of Minecraft, there were a lot of good updates dedicated to some biomes and dimensions. Aquatic update themed for water. Nether update completely changed the nether. Caves and cliffs changed the generation of caves and made them bigger. There was also the village and pillage update which changed the villages and added the pillagers. The wild update added a new swamp biome and an underground dungeon with a portal that doesn't work, as well as its guard, a new mob called the Warden. But after update 1.20, many may be wondering what, in essence, it added. New armour, a new biome, two mobs that no one will use and archaeology, which I had high hopes for, but turned out to be absolutely useless. In this video, I will try to figure out what they can add in update 1.21. Let's start with what a lot of people already want. This is the Ender update. The end dimension was added in the 1.0 update back in 2011 and extended to 1.9 in 2016. This update added islands outside the island of the Ender Dragon. New dungeon, Elytra, new mob, Shulker and Chorus was added. This made players explore the world even after killing the Ender Dragon. But the years went by and the end was rather empty and boring. There is nothing here but Endermen, Chorus and dungeons that's all there is in this world. Update 1.21 should make the end look like this. The next thing I would like to talk about is ambient. Ambient is very important for the perception of the world of the game. I really hoped that it would be added in the second part of Caves and Cliffs or in the Wild Update, but this did not happen. Just listen to how the game is perceived without ambient and with it. As you can see with Ambient, the world of Minecraft becomes much more lively and pleasant. I would also like various small details like falling leaves, water effects and sounds. And add some sounds to the menu. Ancient City update would be logical in 1.21. Remember I said about the broken portal? So I'm waiting for a new dimension which will be harder than Nether and End. And as the Mojang themselves said, they want to add a new boss. He would fit perfectly in that dimension. Do you have a plan for adding a new boss? Make it as gloomy as the Ancient City and add new mobs that will only be found in this dimension. In order for players to have a goal to go to this dimension, there must be some special loot, a new ore like ancient debris or a new item that will drop from mobs. Add dungeons with good loot. It is possible to add a boss to this dungeon, he will be stronger than the Varden so they guarded this portal so as not to awaken him. Finally add the bundles. Mojang have been promising their addition for a long time. In 2020, the Caves and Cliffs presentation showed bundles that could carry 64 items from different categories. This would help carry small items and not fill up the inventory. But unfortunately, they still have not been added. Hope it will be added soon. Add variations of vanilla mobs. Chicken, cows, pigs, sheep, zombies, and other mobs will differ from each other only in appearance, which will make them less the same and monotonous. Four years ago, the Mojang wanted to update the desert and gave the players a choice of which biome to update, but nothing was added. Our deserts have always felt a little... In need of refreshment? No, in need of palm trees and some friendly guides to keep things interesting. Yeah. Let's start with the renewal that lies on the surface. This is the nature update. Why exactly this? This update will finally add ambient sounds, such as birds singing in the forest. 
wind sounds in the mountains, reworked rain sound, sounds crickets at night, water sounds and more. Also in the natural renewal, forests, oak and birch must be updated. Firstly, yes, it is definitely necessary to update the tree variations and what Mojang was shown in concept art. There are not enough various mushrooms in the forest. With their help, it would be possible to add a new potion branch. Yes, developers rarely add interesting effects. You can make it so that from some kind of luminous mushroom, the player could highlight the nearest peaceful mobs in the region of 30 blocks. But you can come up with a bunch of effects and you can actually come up with a lot of ideas with this. It all depends on Mojag's imagination. I would also like fallen trees like in Bedrock. I still don't understand why they are not added. Speaking of mobs, I would like to see a deer. There is a deer in almost all survival games, but it is not in Minecraft. But I don't want Mojangs to add mobs just for beauty, like a polar bear. New mobs should have functionality like deer skin. If it is processed, it will be possible to make a buddle, which Minecraft developers cannot add for about three years. Its meat will replenish four satiety scales, and you can come up with the rest of its functions and write in the comments. We were also shown this edition of Fireflies in Minecraft Live 2021. But later for some reason they cancelled this idea, it's a pity. Because Fireflies would add their own flavour to the game. Oh my god, god that my is so cool. My friend is a Firefly. <laughs> they are literally just two floating pixels that blink. And we're just like, yeah. Yeah. Minecraft, we Okay, but that looks so good. The frogs are murdering them! Oh my god! Oh my god! <laughs> that was so cool. The birch forest should be like the concept art. It looks very nice. Flowers that are found exclusively in the cherry blossom biome should also be found in a regular forest, or rather their forest variation. I would like to be able to put moss vertically on a block instead of just horizontally on the floor and have it spawn in the forest. As well as the forest, the beach needs to be updated. The addition of a palm tree and a coconut would be a nice innovation. On the beaches there can be such mobs as crab and seagull. And finally, the addition of birds to the game. They have not been added since the addition of a parrot. Perhaps they will not have great functionality, but they will greatly enliven the world of Minecraft and fit perfectly into this update. If you have any ideas what birds can really bring to the game, write them in the comments. It will be interesting for me to read. I think all of us have tried to do this at one time or another. Of course, I'm talking about the portal to heaven. This mod was created over 10 years ago and players have always wanted to add it and everyone did not understand why we have hell, but not heaven. Although I don't think that Paradise will ever be added to the game, because it seems too non-vanilla and labour-intensive, I always have some hope that time will pass and we will see a new dimension called Paradise. Dungeon Redesign I think that the old dungeons need to be updated. They look too boring. Corey once said that they want to upgrade the Nether Fortresses. Only the Desert Pyramid remained. Does anyone even remember about the Jungle Dungeon? The Desert Pyramid, although it was updated in 1.20, it added a small room for archaeology, but it looks very boring. It should be updated, made bigger and more interesting. Scatter the chests in different parts, and not just in one place, so that the player explores it completely, rather than breaking one block in the center and taking all the loot in a couple of seconds. Mojang added armor customization in 1.20, but for some reason didn't add it for elytras. Why were they ripped off? Elytra customization would look very nice. I would like spiders to learn to climb walls. It would look natural because all spiders can climb walls in real life. But Mojang said that it would be too scary and they would not do it. Okay, I understand that a lot of children play Minecraft. But Mojang, what do you think about this? Ah! Oh! It's right there! It's right there! That's the word. Where is he? Oh, shit! Oh, shit. <laughs> Minecraft horror. Oh, he's sprinting! Oh my gosh!
Bro, I didn't know man had... Uh, man, oh my gosh, man's fast. Holy moly. Ah! Finally, add the ability to stack slabs on top of each other. In Minecraft, it is not possible to put a different type of slab on a slab. The addition of this function greatly diversifies the construction. Also, I would like slabs to be able to stand upright instead of just horizontally. Builders would love this update. Since I'm a big fan of winter and winter holidays, I would like to see a winter update in the next update. In the caves and cliffs update, very beautiful mountains were added, which made me very happy. On the mountains, we can meet a new block, powder snow. The developers even added a new freezing effect. The mountain biome is very beautiful and realistic, but if you look at other winter biomes, they don't look as good. Snowy plains and snowy tiger are just cool variations of warm biomes. The only structure is the igloo, and two mobs are the polar bear, which gives us raw fish instead of meat. And stray, a winter version of the skeleton that shoots slow arrows. And that's about all winter biomes have to offer. Empty biomes that players most often just run past in search of a better home. The first thing I want to add to winter biomes is a blizzard. A snowstorm would reduce the player's visibility to one and two chunks. And if you got into a snowstorm, you would get a freezing effect. And in order not to freeze, you would need to find shelter and make a fire or start cooking something in the furnace. You can also wear leather armor to keep warm. The freezing effect can only appear during a blizzard, so you could safely explore winter biomes on sunny days without fear of free. Three years ago at Minecraft Live 2020, we were offered to vote on new mobs, Ice Logger, Glow Squid, and Moo Bloom. I voted for Ice Logger, but Glow Squid won. Ice Logger is that winter mob that would diversify the world of Minecraft. Ice Ologers would spawn in mountains and ice spikes and hurl ice clouds at the player and would make these biomes even more challenging. This mob had really great potential, but unfortunately Mob Vote 2020 was rigged by Minecraft Star Dream. He asked his massive fan base to vote for Glow Squids. Speaking of blocks, I'd like a completely snow-covered grass block. Yes, if you put snow on a block of grass, it will turn into snow. But the problem is that if you put, for example, a button or a fence on top, we can see green grass, and this looks very strange. We need a separate snow-covered block that will remove this problem. The next thing I would like to see is different layers of snow. Minecraft has a mechanic of filling the cauldron with snow, and it would be cool if when it snowed, the layer of snow would rise and it would look much more beautiful and realistic. Also in winter biomes, I would like to see a new block, frozen stone. It has a nice blue color, and it would be possible to make different types of stone from it. I would also like new variations of ice. Polished ice and ice bricks looks really cool. I would also like the snow that we put on the block to interact with it. It would not stand out from the vanilla Minecraft, but rather complement it. Also, snow must have the ability to pass through blocks. For example, it can fill the fence without breaking it. If you break a block under the snow, the snow will fall down instead of breaking. And if the snow falls on the water, it will freeze. I would also like the steps to become snowy if snow falls on them. Green foliage in winter biomes should be replaced with snow. Looks much prettier and feels like real winter here. I would also like to see a new effect, freezing. If fired from a bow with the new freeze enchantment, then the mobs would freeze and take damage, the same as from fire. Speaking of structures, I would add a small fisherman's settlement that would be located in the frozen ocean, and all villagers would sell or buy fish. A cool solution would be to add a separate variation of winter mobs. They would have snow on top, which in turn would make the game more immersive. In the desert, we have husk. It inflicts a hunger effect when he hit you. In winter biomes, there should be its analogue, a frozen zombie like in Minecraft dungeons. On impact, it would inflict a frostbite effect for a couple of seconds. The archer's table was added to the game in the 1.14 village and pillage update. But so far, no functionality has been added to this block. We have functionality for every villager blocks, but not for the archer table. Mojang will fix this in the next updates. Jungle update is the next update I would like to see. Let's start in the villages. There are only five types of villages in Minecraft. These are desert, plains, savanna, snowy, and tiger village. As you already understood, the jungle village is not in the game. Jungle update should fix this. Villages can be both on the ground and in trees. New dungeons should also be added. They will be very rare and it will be quite difficult to get loot from these dungeons because hostile mobs with traps and poisoning will be waiting inside the dungeons. Chests will be scattered throughout the dungeon so you will have to explore them in full. Speaking of mobs, I'd like to see monkeys. They could climb walls like spiders. They could be fed and tamed with bananas. They would also steal things that are on the floor. 
Gorillas would also diversify the animal world of the jungle. They could eat leaves and various foods. The mob that I've been waiting for a long time is Medusa. It will live both in the oceans and in cave lakes. In the cave they will be more white, and in the ocean they will be different colours. Loot from them will be something like a piece of pearlescent nematocyst, which can be placed and it will emit light. You can also make a block from it. It will also emit light and will look like water, only it will not spill. Drops will drip from it as if it is liquid. If we talk about biomes in Minecraft in general, then Mojang said that they will update each biome. Hello? Um, so it's up to you to decide which biome we update first. They have already updated the mountains where they added a beautiful generation and a new mob, a goat. Swamp biome where they added a new generation, new trees and a new mob, a toad. Tiger, where they added a fire, berries and a new mob, a fox. It remains to update the rest of the biomes that they showed. This is the desert where we saw a new tree, palm and a new mob, meerkat. Badlands, where you can see a new cactus and a new mob, a hawk. So the Mojang still want to add birds, and this makes me happy. Savannah, where you can see a new tree, baobab, and the new mob, ostrich. I also do not understand why the mobs that were in the vote disappear forever. We're gonna let you choose which one of these four Minecraft mobs that will end up in the game. And remember to vote, because the three ones that you don't vote for, they will be gone forever. Why don't they add them all over time? Because of this vote, we have already lost so many good mobs that would improve Minecraft. This is a master place, which body parts look like shields that will be used to defend itself. The Hovering Inferno spawns with a group of blazes as a random encounter in the nether. The Great Hunger. This cute looking mob has a huge mouth and a great appetite for enchanting powers. It will open its huge jaw and sink into the ground where it camouflages itself. Any mobs or items that fall into its mouth will be consumed. The monster of the ocean depths. The monster will attack you with its tongue-like tentacle to pull you down and drown you. It spawns in deep waters and uses its large mouth to propel itself forward. You should vote for this mob because the oceans currently don't have that much content and it would make it more exciting when traveling from island to island. Just imagine what would happen if all these mobs were added to the game. How many different situations they could bring to Minecraft. Mobs like Moobloom, Ice Logger, Rascal, and Tough Golem will also be forgotten and that makes me sad. Hello everyone. In this video, I will tell you about the things that should be in the next update. There will be quite a lot of things coming so I don't expect them all in one update, but I want these things to appear gradually because it will simply not be possible to add them all in one update. Prepare something tasty and I'll start. Ender update. I read various comments and under the post about the new update, many asked for the ender update. And I agree with you. The end dimension was last updated in combat update 1.9 in 2016. Islands outside of Ender Dragon Island have been added in this update. Added a new dungeon, Elytra, a new mob, Shulker, and Horus. This made the players explore the world even after killing the Ender Dragon. But for seven years, nothing has been added. And the end still remains a flying desert islands. There is nothing here but Endermen, Horus, and dungeons. That's all there is in this world. The first thing I would like to add is the new biomes. They would transform End's world and bring it to life. I also wish the fight with the dragon made more sense. It's silly to watch it fly towards the center for no reason after destroying the crystals. I think the structure of the center should be a source of pink liquid or something that damages the player like lava and slowly heals the dragon. This fountain is buried in the end stone, then the dragon goes there to dig and regenerate itself. YouTuber Impixel showed the idea for the new end update. The new dragon island looks really cool, and also the new dragon looks really nice. It was also perhaps a cool idea to add a small dragon that will hatch from an egg and can be tamed. It was an analogue of the red dragon, which the Mojang once wanted to add, but later refused. There should be no water in the end when you cross the portal, it should be purple like in Minecraft dungeons. And water should not be harmful to Endermen. 
I also wanted to see new mobs like in Minecraft Dungeons. New Endermans looks very nice. They will spawn after killing the Ender Dragon. As well as the new boss Vengeful Heart of Ender, which will spawn in new structures, he will have several phases and the battle with him will be a test of all your skills. Archery, sword, shield, building, potions. Speaking of new mobs, I would like to see new slimes, new type of skeletons, end stray. It can shoot with the new acid arrows and will spawn in separate biomes. Mob end whales will fly in the air and add to the atmosphere to the end. New golems that will guard new structures and end cities. Broken ships of the end, small dungeons should also be in the end. New ore, enderite. Ore should improve netherite armor, just as netherite improves diamond. Interface update. The Minecraft interface is sorely lacking some things. They can be a huge time saver and just a pleasure to use. Food shows how much it'll heal with icons and will show when it'll give you negative effects. Items that are in the shulker box can be viewed without leaving the inventory. This saves a lot of time. If you hover over a map in your inventory, it will show up immediately and you won't need to open it manually. Enchanted books show which items they can be applied to. Furnace fuel shows how many items it can smelt. An icon that shows how many items you are holding in your hands. The status of the armor will be shown in a small icon at the bottom so you don't have to constantly check it in your inventory. The state of the elytra is also shown when you're flying. Armor and tools should show a small icon and a number how much armor adds to the amount of protection and how much damage tools can do and you will be able to compare other armor. Two new buttons need to be in chests. Insert and extract. The insert button will put every item in your inventory inside the chest and the extract button will pull every item from the chest into your inventory. The inventory sorting button should appear in the inventory. I still don't understand why it's not there. We need a search bar in the chest where you can type and filter items in the chest by your query. Items that don't match will be darkened. You can also search for enchantment and potion names or wrap the search in quotes to match entire names. Pressing the bind key will show your entire inventory above your hotbar. You can then press one, two or three to switch that respective inventory row with your hotbar. Pressing shift plus T while looking at an item in an inventory links that item to chat and other players can hover over it to check it out. When a tool breaks, it will be restocked by other items of the same type taken from your inventory. Pressing the rebendable key will toggle auto walk, and while in auto walk, auto jump is also enabled. Pressing F12 will open camera mode. In this new mode, you can take enhanced screenshots by using over 20 image filters and combining them with borders and overlays. In creative, you can pick up blocks from any distance. If you try to craft an item using the recipe book but don't have all necessary ingredients, you can right-click the created ghost items to instead bring up the recipe for that item. The item you were previously trying to craft will now be put in a crafting queue, which shows up above the crafting result. Upon crafting the current item, the previous item in the queue is loaded again. Adding sounds to the menu. Nature update. Ambient is one of the most important things that immerse you in the game world. We already have cool ambient in the nether, and it's time to add it to the overworld. In Minecraft should be added sounds such as birds singing in the forest, wind sounds, reworked rain sound, Cricket sounds at night. Water sounds and much more. Also in nature update, the forest should be updated. Tree variations need to be updated and what Mojang was shown in concept art would fit perfectly. I would also like fallen trees like in bedrock. I still do not understand why it's not added to Java. Iron blocks will rust in the rain. 
they can be waxed using honeycomb, preventing the block from rusting further and freezing it in the state of rust it is in. Uh, soot forms in thin layers on vertical surfaces above campfires, but is purely aesthetic and will not drop items. Weeds grow when your farmland hasn't been tended to for long periods of time. Over time, moss will grow on stone blocks when exposed to air and nearby water, including when rain touches these blocks. Humus generates on the ground in dark forest biomes. Ivy generates on tree trunks in forest biomes. Leaves blocks will have falling leaf particles. A bark item corresponding to the respective wood type will now be dropped whenever you strip a log with an axe. Also, you can reapply their on wood log. Bark can also be used to craft wood blocks. Bark can be used to smelt a single item or used in a composter. Leaf piles form over time and fall when leaves blocks decay. Leaf piles can also be crafted using three of their respective leaves blocks in a row. With leaf piles, you can make a block, you can pass through it or hide in it. As well as the forest, the beach needs to be updated. The addition of a palm tree and a coconut would be a nice innovation. On the beaches, there can be such mobs as crab and seagull. And finally, the addition of birds to the game. They have not been added since the addition of a parrot. Perhaps they will not have great functionality, but they will greatly enliven the world of Minecraft and fit perfectly into this update. The mob that I have been waiting for a long time is jellyfish. It will live both in the oceans and in cave lakes. In the cave, they will be more white, and in the ocean, they will be different colours. Jellyfish can be taken with a bucket like a fish. Loot from them will be something like a piece of pearlescent nematocyst, which can be placed and it will emit light. You can also make a block from it. It will also emit light and will look like water, only it will not spill. Drops will drip from it because it is liquid. The mob that I have been waiting for a long time is the deer. There is a deer in almost all survival games, but it is not in Minecraft. But I don't want Mojangs to add mobs just for beauty. Like a polar bear, new mobs should have functionality, like deer skin if it is combined with threads and then fried, then it will be possible to make bundle, which Minecraft developers cannot add for about three years. Since we have a polar bear, I'm waiting for the bear, which will live in the forest. He will not pose a danger to the player, until player get very close to him. We were also shown the addition of fireflies in Minecraft Live 2021. Minecraft's community immediately warmly reacted to this mob. Fireflies. I fucking call it! So yes! See them roaming around, adding a lot of ambient. Cory? Firefly! Firefly! Wow! Roaming around, adding a lot of ambient. That is so cool. Making it feel just nice and cozy at night. But really, my favorite part of it is just making the world like. Guys, Minecraft, we could have done this one in about 20 minutes. Oh, yeah. Oh, my God. They also added the ability for the frogs to eat these fireflies, but subsequently, people began to say that fireflies were poisoned for frogs and Mojang did not add fireflies to the game. A lot of species of fireflies and firebugs that are out there are poisonous to toads and frogs. And of course, we didn't want to add that into our game. And fireflies are sadly no longer part of the plans for the wild update. What? So frogs can't eat fireflies, but they can eat magma cubes without a problem. Great logic, Mojang. Mojang, why can't you just remove the ability for frogs to eat fireflies? I think roses should grow in the forest, and each rose should have its own bush variant. Also in the forests, with a rare chance, you can find an abandoned house. It will not have a lot of loot, but it can be repaired or survive one night. Extra update. There are things that I can't put in a separate update, but I would like to see them along with other updates. The feeding trough is a new block you can craft with some planks and fence gates. Nearby animals will flock to the trough to eat the food within. This works just as if a player had fed the animal, and if there's more than 32 animals in a 10 block radius, the animals will eat, but never enter love mode. Armor stands will have arms. You may also give them items and weapons. This isn't a thing by default in Java Edition for some reason. Shift right clicking an armor stand will swap its armor set for whatever armor you're currently wearing. Firework rockets are able to start elytra flying, even if you're not currently in flying. All you have to do is right click a firework rocket and you'll shoot up into the sky. When flying using elytra over a campfire with a hay bale under it, the player will be propelled upwards slightly. 
Corals can be placed on top of cactus because the moisture within the cactus will keep the coral alive. Double doors open together when right-clicked. Item frames can be dyed. Right-clicking a ladder with another one will place it, allowing you to drop ladders down without risking falling to your death. When on a ladder, looking down will make you slide down the ladder very quickly. Glass now drops shards, crafting them creates a glass block back. The shards act like glowstone dust, in which fortune will let you get more, and silk touch will just drop the block. Breaking grass or crops with a hoe will break a 3x3 of them. A diamond hoe will break a 5x5 instead. Right-clicking a crop will harvest it and replant it. If you have hoe harvesting enabled, you can also harvest a large area at once. Slabs can be recombined into blocks in a shapeless recipe. Sponges can be placed directly onto water without needing to place them on the side of a block. Holding an emerald block causes nearby villagers to follow the player, much like animals do for food items. Stone tools can be crafted with any type of stone. Coral can be crafted into the respective dyes. Cookies, paper, and bread can be crafted in a 2x2 crafting grid as a bent recipe. Charcoal can be used as an alternative way to craft black dye. Torches can be used as fuel in a furnace smelting two items each. Rotten flesh and poisonous potatoes can be used in the composter. Apples, golden apples, potatoes, carrots and beetroots can be crafted into crates. Gold bars are just like iron bars, but with gold. More items will fit in pots. Brick, chiselled brick and pillar variants are available for all types of stone. Rope coils can be crafted using string. This new block can be placed on the bottom face of a block and dropped by right-clicking on the placed rope block. Shift right-clicking or right-clicking with a non-rope item will pull the rope up. Sandstone made of soul sand. Soul sandstone can be turned into stairs, slabs and walls, bookshelves out of all wood types. Chests can be made of all the different wood types. Furnaces crafted from deep slate or blackstone have new textures. Additionally, blackstone furnaces can emit soul fire particles if placed over a block that can light up with soul fire. Vertical slabs should be added to the game as it will double the builder ideas. Finally, add the ability to stack slabs on top of each other. In Minecraft, it is not possible to put a different type of slab on a slab. The addition of this function greatly diversifies the construction. Candles placed and lit on soul sand or soul soil will emit soul flames. Add variations of vanilla mobs. Chicken, cows, pigs, sheep, zombies and other mobs will differ from each other only in appearance, which will make them less the same and monotonous. Mojang added armor customization in 1.20 but for some reason didn't add it for elytras. Why were they ripped off? Elytra customization would look very nice. I would like spiders to learn to climb walls. It would look natural because all spiders can climb walls in real life. But Mojang said that it would be too scary and they would not do it. Okay, I understand that a lot of children play Minecraft. But Mojang, what do you think about this? Where's this warden motherfucker, huh? That's the word. Where is he? Oh, <laughs> 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 I'm not making too much noise. I am sneaking. Okay, you know what? I'm just gonna run. No, I'm not! Stop! Ah! Ah! It's right there! It's right there! Oh, God! That was fast. What? 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 <laughs> I think Minecraft needs to up its age rating. What is this game rated? <laughs> oh my god! It definitely needs to be higher. Uh, the ability to lie down will be possible on one key. You do not need more hatches for this. The winter update. Winter biomes in vanilla Minecraft are pretty empty. They are just cold variations of already existing biomes without bringing in anything new. 
The only thing that stands out in these biomes is the mountains, which look very beautiful and realistic. The only new mobs are Stray and Polar Bear, which were added as early as update 1.10 in 2016. In a new update, I would like to see new snow. I want it to leave layers of snow when it snows, not just fall to the ground endlessly. We need a block that will always be in the snow. A block of ground covered with snow looks really cool, but the problem is that if you put some object on it, the snow will disappear and you will see green grass, which looks very strange. A snow-covered block will solve this problem. I would also like the snow to pass through objects such as a fence, a gate and others. If the snow lies on the block, then when the block was broken, the snow did not disappear but fell to the ground. And if it falls on the water, the water will freeze. If snow falls on the stairs, then it will also be covered with snow. I would also like the snow to interact with the block so that the snow covers them realistically, as if the snow is not just covering them, but hanging from them. Foliage should be white in winter biomes. Snow-covered foliage would look very realistic. New winter flowers diversify snow-covered forests. In winter biomes, there should be a new block, a snow-covered stone. It will be an analogue of a regular stone, but various blocks can be made from it. Snow blocks can be crafted into snow bricks. Ice can be made into polished ice and have brick variants. Ice sheets are thin sheets of ice made from ice blocks. They behave the exact same as glass panes, but if they are hit by any projectile, they will break. I would also like to see a new effect, freezing. If fired from a bow with the new freeze enchantment, mobs would freeze and take damage. A snowstorm would make survival in Minecraft much more difficult. In a blizzard, visibility is reduced to one chunk and you would have a freezing effect. In order not to freeze, you need to find shelter and warm yourself near a fire or stove. Frost must also be added, the glass will freeze when snow falls. The torch will be able to melt the snow and ice around it. Another cool solution would be to add a separate variation of winter mobs. They would have snow on top, which in turn would make the game more immersive. In the desert, we have husk. It inflicts a hunger effect when he hit you. In winter biomes, there should be its analogue, a frozen zombie like in Minecraft dungeons. On impact, it would inflict a frostbite effect for a couple of seconds. During a snowstorm, you could meet a new mob, Yeti. He will be a neutral mob if he is alone. But if he spawns with a hatchling and you get close to them, he will start attacking you while protecting his hatchling. Also in Minecraft, I would like to see a penguin. They would live where polar bears live. Water in snowy biomes is freezing. Ice caves are a kind of caves in Minecraft. As you already understood, they will mainly consist of ice and icicles. Icicles will be analogous to stalactites. They can even be eaten, but the effect of freezing will be adjusted on you. Also three years ago at Minecraft Live 2020, we were offered to vote on new mobs, Ice Logger, Glow Squid, and Moo Bloom. I voted for Ice Logger, but Glow Squid won. Ice Logger is that winter mob that would diversify the world of Minecraft. Iceologers would spawn in mountains and ice spikes and hurl ice clouds at the player and would make these biomes even more challenging. This mob had really great potential, but unfortunately Mob Vote 2020 was rigged by Minecraft Star Dream. He asked his massive fan base to vote for Glow Squids. Redstone Update. In the Redstone Update, I suggest adding these things. Pressure plates made with obsidian will only trigger when players walk over them. Dispensers are allowed to place blocks in the world and crops such as wheat seeds or potatoes also count. The chute is a new automation block. Items can be inserted into it via automation and any items inserted are instantly dropped under it. Chains can now connect blocks together when a piston moves them. The Ender Watcher is a new redstone input block. It emits a redstone signal if a player is looking directly at it. It's crafted with an eye of ender, redstone, and obsidian. Dispensers are now able to place discs into jukeboxes. Pistons are allowed to move chests and furnaces. The randomizer is a new redstone component. When given a redstone signal from the back, it'll randomly enable either the left or right output. Copper pipes are crafted using some copper ingots and glass. 
As you would expect, they transport items from point A to point B. To get items into a pipe, simply use a hopper, or any other insertion means you may have handy. Biomes and mobs update. If we talk about biomes in Minecraft in general, then Mojang said that they will update each biome. Hello? Um, so it's up to you to decide which biome we update first. They have already updated the mountains where they added a beautiful generation and a new mob, a goat. Swamp biome where they added a new generation, new trees and a new mob, a toad. Tiger, where they added a fire, berries and a new mob, a fox. It remains to update the rest of the biomes that they showed. This is the desert where we saw a new tree, palm and a new mob, meerkat. Badlands, where you can see a new cactus and a new mob, a hawk. So the Mojang still want to add birds, and this makes me happy. Savannah, where you can see a new tree, baobab, and the new mob, ostrich. I also do not understand why the mobs that were in the vote disappear forever. We're gonna let you choose which one of these four Minecraft mobs that will end up in the game. And remember to vote, because the three ones that you don't vote for, they will be gone forever. Why don't they add them all over time? Because of this vote, we have already lost so many good mobs that would improve Minecraft. This is a master place, which body parts look like shields that will be used to defend itself. The Hovering Inferno spawns with a group of blazes as a random encounter in the nether. The Great Hunger. This cute looking mob has a huge mouth and a great appetite for enchanting powers. It will open its huge jaw and sink into the ground where it camouflage itself. Any mobs or items that fall into its mouth will be consumed. The monster of the ocean depths. The monster will attack you with its tongue-like tentacle to pull you down and drown you. It spawns in deep waters and uses its large mouth to propel itself forward. You should vote for this mob because the oceans currently don't have that much content and it would make it more exciting when traveling from island to island. Just imagine what would happen if all these mobs were added to the game. How many different situations they could bring to Minecraft. Mobs like Moobloom, Ice Logger, Rascal, and Tough Golem will also be forgotten and that makes me sad. Minecraft is a special game in the gaming industry, a game that was released in 2010 and still gives people unforgettable emotions. A game that is loved at any age. Just imagine, the game had about 20 major updates that changed the world. Mechanics, appearance, during this time, a huge amount of content was added, and the game is still alive and updated every six months. If you compare Minecraft in 2010 with today, it is a completely different game. To understand what updates we need, let's look at the updates that have been released throughout its existence. I will not mention the beta or alpha versions. I will only show you the big name updates. Let's start with the release of Minecraft, namely version 1.0. In this version, the end was added, and the final goal appeared in Minecraft, to kill the dragon. New structures have been added, villages, strongholds, and mineshafts. Potions, enchantment table, villages, ghast and blaze were also added, but you might be thinking, where is the nether? It was added in alpha 1.0. After the 1.0 update, Mojang added very little content in versions, so I'll skip those and start with 1.4 Pretty Scary Update. In 1.4, Pretty Scary Update added an anvil, a beacon, a command block, mob heads, and a lot of hostile mobs and boss, Wither. In 1.5 Redstone Update, as you already understood, updated Redstone, added many mechanisms and many new mechanics. In 1.6, Horse update, they added terracotta in different colors. As you already understood from the name, horses were added on which you can now quickly ride around the world. In 1.7, the update that changed the world, 11 new biomes, flowers, and colorful glass were added. In 1.8 bountiful update, a new structure was added. Ocean monument and new hostile mobs, guardians and elder guardians. Banners, armor stand, new type of stone and new doors. In 1.9 combat update, as you already understood from the name, the combat system was redesigned. Now players will not compete to see who can click the mouse faster, but will hit at the right time for more damage. Shields and the ability to take things in the other hand were added. The end has also been updated, and after killing the dragon you have access to other islands on which to spawn a new structure, the end city, in which lives a new hostile mob, a shulker from which you can make a shulker box and carry a lot of things. Elytra was also added for fast movement around the world. In 1.10 Frostburn update, a couple of mobs were added. This is where the update ends. In 1.11 Exploration update, one new generated structure was added. 
woodland mansion and mobs like Vindicators, Evokers and Vexes. Also, Totem of Undying was added. In 1.12 World of Colour update, multicoloured blocks and beds, new mobs, parrots and illusioner were added. A recipe book and knowledge book were also added. 1.13 Update Aquatic was a huge update. I can't list everything for you. But water in Minecraft was completely redesigned. It could pass through some blocks. The oceans also became much more beautiful. Fish, dolphins and turtles finally appeared in the water. New abandoned structures, treasures, corals, kelp and other things of which there are still a lot. 1.14th Village and Pillage update was another huge update aimed at villages and villages. Villages have been completely redesigned. New types of villages for each biome. Professions for villages. The trading system with villagers has been reworked. Villagers can now be attacked by pillagers and revengers. New interactive blocks, 12 new walls, 14 new stairs and 14 new slabs, banner patterns, crossbows, wandering traders, foxes and much more. 1.15 Buzzy Bees was a small update. I can't even call it an update. Bees could easily have been added along with some other update. I don't understand why it was released separately. The 1.16 Nether update completely redesigned Nether, including six new biomes, introduced new mobs like piglins, hoglins, and striders, added netherite, a powerful upgrade for equipment, and much more. 1.17 Caves and Cliffs was a huge update that completely changed the caves and mountains in Minecraft, made the world two times larger in depth, introduced new mobs like the axolotl, goats, and glow squid, added new blocks like amethyst, copper, and deep slate variants, added powder snow, new tree azalea, and much more. In 1.19, the wild update added a new ancient city structure and a new mob for this structure, Warden. Skulk will also now be generated in the world, added a new biome, mangrove swamp, and a new mangrove tree and new mobs, frog, tadpole, and alley. 1.20 Trails and Tales added a new biome, cherry grove with new trees, and an underground trail ruin structure. Added two new mobs, Sniffer and Camel, new bamboo blocks, hanging sign, two new plants, chiseled bookshelf, a new archaeology system, and new pottery sherds, and smithing templates from which you can decorate your armor. It is also not yet known what the new update 1.21 will be called, and we do not know all the content that will be. But now we know that a new structure will be added, trial chamber. Finally, more copper crafts, new interactive block, crafter, new spawner, and new hostile mob, Breeze. If you look at these updates, you can understand that there were quite a few really good updates, and I want to remind you that the game has existed for more than 13 years, and this upsets me, since the game has huge potential, and the love of players who have already made a million mods, adding things that Mojang can't do for years, or can't do at all. The first big update with which we will start is, of course, the end update. This dimension has enormous potential, and literally anything can be added to this dimension. Biomes, mobs, ores, bosses, new structures, and much more. The end was last updated seven years ago, and for some reason the developers focused on overworld and did not update this dimension anymore. Minecraft's players have been waiting for the end update for many years, but the developers don't seem to be doing it on purpose. In the end update, I want to see new biomes as this dimension is too empty. But some of you probably think, but the end should be empty, and nothing needs to be changed there, perhaps this is true. But why then did Mojang completely rework Nether? We added new biomes, new structures, new mobs that you can move around and even trade with. Overworld was also empty before, but now it is filled with a variety of biomes and everything possible. So new biomes must be in the end. I'm tired of seeing these endless empty flying islands on which End City is occasionally found. The end should look something like this. Also, ambient sounds must be added to these biomes. Just listen to how cool it sounds.
Also, in the end dimension, I want to see new ore. I'm not asking you to add a lot of them, one is enough. Enderite ore will be found in the mines of the islands, and to get it you will need to first blow up the ore, and then extract it only with a netherite pickaxe. If you mine it with a diamond one, the ore will not fall out. This ore cannot be smelted in a regular furnace. For this you need blast furnace. This ore is similar to netherite ore in crafting, but instead of gold, you need diamonds. This ore will be used to upgrade netherite items, and to upgrade them, you will need an enderite template. An enderite sword, for example, does one more damage than a netherite sword. You can also improve elytra, they will have more strength. I also want to see more structures, not just in city. All sorts of small buildings, lanterns, abandoned structures, small houses, destroyed ships from end city, destroyed end city, end city itself, various villages and other buildings. I also want to see new dungeons, because going to end only for loot from end city is quite the same. In these dungeons there should be new mobs that will be very difficult to defeat without preparation. Something like Warden, but not with as much health. For example, a new golem that will guard end city or other buildings. New structures must be different from each other. If end city is a ground structure, then there should also be an underground structure with tunnels and all sorts of secret passages with very good loot. If there is a pillager camp in Overworld, then there should be an analog in the end. Also, a new building for a new mini boss wouldn't hurt either. If we talk about mobs, then at the end, there should be flying creatures. They will add atmosphere to the biomes and immerse them more into this dimension. I also want to see the ender slime. It will be analogous to the usual one from Overworld. You can also see jellyfish and enderfish in reservoirs. They will serve as food, like hoglin in the nether. And of course endermans. I want to see new endermen like the mojang did in Minecraft Dungeons. Different types of endermen, with different amounts of health and abilities. Some will be faster, but with a small amount of health, while others will be slow, but tenacious. In general, the developers of Minecraft Dungeons came up with a lot of new things for the end. They could implement them in our Minecraft. Since the end is the last dimension where the player enters, there should be a new final boss here. Killing the dragon should only be a warm-up before the main battle. Killing the dragon shouldn't be the end of Minecraft because it's a very easy boss that people kill in a couple of seconds in speedruns. The developers have already come up with Minecraft Dungeons. This is Vengeful Heart of Ender. Of course it needs a new structure that will spawn a couple of times on the world, like a stronghold. And to find this structure, the player will have to go to all new structures. For example, for a new eye, which will lead to a new structure. The boss battle will have several stages. You will have to be able to handle a sword, shield, and bow. And the battle should not be easy. You will not be able to escape from him or build up, since this boss knows how to hit you through walls. In the battle, you will face not only the boss, but also other mobs that he will summon. After victory, a portal will appear in the center of the structure, entering which the credits will begin, and you will be taken back to the overworld. Stronghold needs to change too. It was added to 1.0 in 2011, and its design has not changed in any way. More than 10 years have passed, and the design has not changed at all. Mojang should rework this structure, make it more beautiful and interesting, with a lot of rooms and content. Since the player finds a stronghold at the end of the game, there should be a lot more chests with loot. The first thing I want to start with nature update is the seasons. Minecraft is divided into cold and warm biomes. I think this is not correct. Winter should not be at the same time as summer, so seasons should appear in Minecraft like in real life, so that the foliage gradually turns yellow in the fall, and later snow begins to fall, gradually covering the whole world in permafrost, so that after winter, the snow melts, and the trees begin to turn green. This would be cool to see in Minecraft, and I don't think it would be difficult to implement. I also don't want the seasons to affect the crops. I just want them to be a decoration for the world of Minecraft. The next thing I would like to see is an update to the forest. More diversity in trees. Fallen trees, which are in Minecraft bedrock, but not in Java for some unknown reason. Ivy can also grow on trees. It looks very beautiful. We need more variety of grass, such as weeds. It can grow among regular grass and will give variety to the plants. Also. Fallen leaves from trees will accumulate under the trees, as well as fall on the water, and if you collect them in a heap, you can hide in these leaves. I want moss to grow in the forests. It's strange that there isn't any yet. 
Moss can also appear on stone and brick blocks from rain, or simply from the nearest moss block. Iron can rust from rain. The oxidation process can be stopped using honeycomb, as we can do with copper. Copper has the function of oxidation, but not iron rusts? This is weird. Weeds grow in garden beds if they have not been used for a long time. After cutting down a tree, after some time, the leaves that are in the air will fall to the ground. Leaves can be used to make a carpet. Mushrooms should grow on trees. I also want to be able to place sticks on the ground from different trees. In buildings, it will look very cool and natural. These sticks can be used to make a mini tree. I'm tired of seeing trees made from fences and leaves. When we stripped log by using axe, the bark does not fall out to us. This is strange. From the bark we could make paper, for example. And the bark can also be placed back if you remove the bark of a log by accident. I don't understand why we can only plant one flower per block. We need to add the ability to put more flowers in one block. It looks very nice. You can also put flowers in a pot. It's strange to me why this is still not available in Minecraft. I also want to see more small effects. When something falls into the water, splashes will come from the water and the effect of rain on water looks very beautiful. The waterfalls must change too. Chests open underwater emit bubbles. Skulk dust floating out of skulk blocks. Glow squid particles. Allay trails. Flowing water droplets. The beach should also change. Palm trees will grow on it, and crabs and seagull will live on it. And of course, add ambient sounds to the biomes. I also want the northern lights to sometimes appear at night in cold biomes. It looks very beautiful. Speaking of mobs, I want to see a deer. Deer is in many survival games, but it is not in Minecraft. He will live in cold biomes. Deer can have a lot of potential, from food to various crafts. For example, from his skin, it will be possible to make a bundle, which Mojang has not been able to add for several years. I also want to see a forest bear. We already have a white one. But for some reason, there is no forest bear. A bear is a mob that will give a lot of meat, but is quite rare. You can also meet a bear with a child. I also want to see birds. They may not have much functionality, but birds greatly diversify the world of Minecraft. In Minecraft Live 2021, we were shown fireflies. This mob could have added atmosphere to the biomes. But unfortunately, fireflies were not added due to the fact that the Mojang learned that fireflies are poisonous to toads, and they did not want to add them to the game. I don't know why they didn't just remove the ability for frogs to eat fireflies, it's really weird. The mob that should appear in the water is a jellyfish. It will live in mines, and in the oceans. In the ocean, the jellyfish will be of different colors, and in the mine, it will be white. With jellyfish, it will be possible to make a new block that will have the properties of water but in the form of a block. You can place a block and float through it, and the block will not spill like water does. I also want to see what Minecraft has already shown us in Biome Chooser. In the Savannah update, they should have added a new Baobab tree, and a new animal, Ostrich, which knows how to hide its head in the sand. You can also see termites here. Perhaps they want to add a termite mound in which they will live. In Badlands update, they want to add Vulture. Finally, it will be a bird. There will also be a new cactus and tumbleweed in the Badlands biome. Also new menu sounds will be a cool feature.
It would also be cool to rework the sound and add depth to it. There will be an echo in caves and confined spaces. It sounds very cool. And for those who don't like it, there should be an option to play with normal sound. The textures of the blocks, if they are next to each other, should be connected together. The glass must be transparent with one texture. We need variations of common mobs, such as cows, sheep, chickens, wolves, pigs, zombies and others. Block textures can climb on top of each other, which makes the world more real. And the last thing I want to see in Nature Update is a complete reworking of biomes and structures, adding new biomes and structures that will diversify the world of Minecraft. Winter biomes in Minecraft are very empty. They are just cold variations of regular biomes. Winter updater should make winter biomes much better. The first thing we'll start with is snow. I want it to accumulate on top of each other when it snows. Yes, I know that there is a special command for this, but no one uses it, and this fiction is not there by default. Snow should also be able to pass objects such as fences, gates, and others. If you break a block under the snow, it will not disappear but will fall as it should, and if it falls on water, the water will freeze. Also, if snow falls on the stairs, they should be covered with snow. Besides, all blocks will be covered with snow, or they can be covered manually. The ground covered in snow looks cool, but the ground in winter biomes should be snow covered as a separate block, because if we put some object on the snow, we will see green grass, which should not be like that. A snow covered grass block will solve this problem. The foliage textures in winter biomes are supposed to be completely white. I don't understand why they are green. Snow will fall from the trees in the form of particles. It looks very cool. Snow should also pass through the foliage and be under the trees. We need new flowers that will only grow in winter biomes. Various crops and paths will also be snowy. The grass will also be snowy. Short grass will also be snow covered. Flowers and everything else should also be covered with snow. Fences and walls should also be covered in snow. New colored bushes should also be added. Snow can be crafted into snow bricks. Ice can also be turned into ice bricks or made into polished ice. You can also make glass from ice. It will have the same appearance as glass panels. The mines should also change. Some of them will be completely icy with icicles. Icicles will be an analogue of a stalactite. If you stand on thin ice, it will break and you will start to freeze. Frost will freeze the glass when it snows. Icicles can appear on trees, as well as on houses or blocks that you place. Mobs should be covered with snow on top, which will make the world colder. 
torch and campfire can melt snow and ice. There should also be a snowstorm in which visibility is reduced due to snow. If you run on the ice on the lake, nothing will happen, but if you jump, the ice will break. I want to see a new effect, freezing. If you enchant it on a bow, then when you shoot at mobs, they will freeze for a couple of seconds, which will give you extra time to escape from the battle. Speaking of mobs, I want to see a penguin. Unfortunately, he lost the recent mob vote 2023, but I still want to see him in the future. Penguin is a cute mob that will add atmosphere to the winter biome. He can ride on his belly, and also if you tame him, he will catch fish from the lakes for you. As I already said in Nature Update, deer should live in the winter forest. You can also meet Yeti in the forest. The Yeti will be very rare and will be a neutral mob. But if the Yeti is with her cub, then if you get very close, the Yeti will start attacking you. There will also be frozen zombies in winter biomes. This already exists in Minecraft Dungeons. If he hits you, you will be given a slow effect and will now have a harder time running away from them. Well, the last mob is Iceologer. Iceologer lost mob vote 2020, and most likely we won't see him again. This mob has great potential, but Mojang doesn't want to add good mobs to our game. Iceologer is a hostile mob that attacks you with clouds of flying ice. And the last thing I want to see in the winter update is a change in the snow. In Minecraft, it falls very slowly from top to bottom, and it doesn't matter what the weather is like outside. I want to see how the snow is blown by the wind in different directions. It looks very beautiful and realistic. The desert in Minecraft should also be updated. The first thing I want to add is the weather. A desert storm is perfect here. Just imagine that while walking in the desert, a storm begins. Visibility deteriorates and the wind increases. The sand layer should also be in the game, I don't understand why it's not there yet. Also, during a sandstorm, sand will accumulate like snow does during a snowfall. A new oasis biome, which will have a new palm tree, as we were shown in the biome chooser in Desert Update. We were also shown a new mob called Meerkat. I'm looking forward to adding them to the game. The cacti will bloom, and a small flower will appear on them. If a stone comes into contact with sand, over time it will become covered with sand, and its texture will change. This will happen with all types of stone. The new small buildings should be in the desert, as if someone lived here before. I want to see a complete rework of the desert pyramid, or a new separate structure. It will be much larger than a regular pyramid, and with more loot. Things will be scattered throughout the structure, so you won't be able to come to the center, break the block, and take all the things. To get to the main loot, you will need to visit the remaining rooms, which will be fraught with dangers and clues, through which you will solve the puzzle and get to the main loot. A new mob will be waiting for you in this structure, a mummy. The mummy will defend this structure and upon impact, inflict a hunger effect on you. In fact, besides the big updates, Minecraft is missing little things that will make the game easier, better, or more immersive. Here are a few of them. Players have been asking for vertical slabs for a long time, but the Mojang don't seem to hear these requests. Vertical slabs would add variety to buildings and builders would be delighted. When we put planks, the texture is always horizontal. Vertical planks must also be added. Chests made from different types of trees, with individual texture and color. Same thing with bookshelves, I don't understand why we only have one type of them. You can use banners on the bed, it looks very cool. The achievements page should be bigger, I don't understand why it's small, and we have to move it to see something. When you move items in your inventory, they will not teleport, but with a nice little animation. More variations of the stone out of all the stones in Minecraft. A fence gate made of nether bricks. It's not clear to me why this is not there yet. Ladders can be made of all the different wood types. Your worlds can be added to favorites. They will appear on top of all your worlds. 
The tip of a vine can now be right-clicked with shears. When you do so, the vine will no longer be able to grow. More potted plants. We can only plant flowers in a pot. But why not add this to all plants? Glass item frames. I don't understand why item frames are made only of leather. Item frames can also be dyed similar to leather armor. Gold bars are just like iron bars, but with gold. They look great for nether builds. Candles placed and lit on soul sand or soul soil will emit soul flames. We need to fix a visual bug with soul fire. When the player catches fire, he burns with regular fire, not blue fire. Pick block can select blocks at any distance in creative mode. I need to add a search line to chests. It often happens to me that I may not notice the item I need among the garbage in a large chest. You can also search for enchantment and potion names, or wrap the search in quotes to match entire names. New items you have picked up will be displayed with a small icon. This will help you understand what you have picked up when your inventory is full. We need two new buttons in the chest, insert and extract. The insert button will try to put every item in your inventory inside the chest and the extract button will try to pull every item from the chest into your inventory. A sort button needs to be added to the inventory screen and chests. The chains will be able to cling to the fence. Shift right clicking an armor stand will swap its armor set for whatever armor you're currently wearing. If you put objects in an anvil, they will remain on it. The same should happen with the enchanting table. The objects you place will fly near the table. Pressing Shift plus T while looking at an item in an inventory links that item to chat. Other players can hover over it to check it out. Armor stands placed by the armor stand item will have arms. You may also give them items. This isn't a thing by default in Java Edition for some reason. Firework rockets are able to be used to start elytra flying, even if you're not currently in that state. All you have to do is right-click a firework rocket while wearing an elytra, and you'll shoot up into the sky. When flying using an elytra over a campfire with a hay bale under it, the player will be propelled upwards slightly. Double doors open together when right-clicked. Right-clicking a ladder with another one will place it allowing you to drop ladders down without risking falling to your death. And when on a ladder, looking down will make you slide down the ladder very quickly. Glass needs to drop shards. Crafting them in a 2x2 creates a glass block back. Anvils won't be damaged from renaming item. Right-clicking a crop will harvest it and replant it. Slabs can be recombined into blocks in a shapeless recipe. Sponges can be placed directly onto water without needing to place them on the side of a block. Stone tools can be crafted with any type of stone. Cookies, paper, and bread can be crafted in a 2x2 crafting grid. Wool of any color can be dyed. Holding an emerald block causes nearby villagers to follow the player, much like animals do for food items. Villagers close their eyes when they sleep. Diagonal fence and diagonal glass panels should be in the game. Different types of slabs must connect to each other. It is quite strange that the Mojang have not yet been able to implement this. Finally, Add functionality for fletching table. It has not been used for more than four years. Add customization for elytra. Armor customization was added in update 1.20, but elytras were left without attention. Spiders will be able to climb walls normally. The climbing animation is currently very bad and spiders cannot crawl on the ceiling. This needs to be fixed. You can move while your inventory is open. In the redstone update, I propose adding these things. 
Chains can now connect blocks together when a piston moves them. Dispensers are allowed to place blocks in the world, and crops such as wheat seeds or potatoes also count. The chute is a new automation block. Items can be inserted into it via automation, and any items inserted are instantly dropped under it, always precisely in the center. Copper pipes are crafted using some copper ingots and glass. As you would expect, they transport items from point A to point B. To get items into a pipe, simply use a hopper, dropper, or any other insertion means you may have handy. The Ender Watcher is a new redstone input block. It emits a redstone signal if a player is looking directly at it. Dispensers are now able to place discs into jukeboxes. Pistons are allowed to move tile entities, blocks with extra data attached, like chests or furnaces. Pressure plates made with obsidian will only trigger when players walk over them. The randomizer is a new redstone component. When given a redstone signal from the back, it'll randomly enable either the left or right output. And the last thing I want to see in updates is the addition of old mobs that lost the vote. What's better is to remove this vote forever. We've lost a lot of potentially good mobs and it makes me sad. Thank you for watching this video. I made it long enough to add everything I wanted to Minecraft. If you liked it, please like and subscribe. I will be very grateful to you. Bye.